Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about DGF, or Dense Geometry Format. As the name implies, this is a new technology that AMD are working on, which is going to allow uh, geometry details in a scene to be compressed, which means that they're going to be a lot more performance. And this is going to be critical for the next generation of games for ray tracing performance, and not only will it benefit PC gamers, but also console gamers as well. And we will also be discussing this, a co-compute unit. Uh, this is almost certainly for RDNA 5 or later. And this is a patent, so it's pretty interesting stuff. At least I think so. Now, just so you guys know, I'm going to try to make this as accessible as possible to people. So I'm going to trim down some of the verbiage and some of the technical details. Therefore, not everything is going to be 100% technically accurate because I want as many people to be able to understand the gist of what I'm saying here as possible. I will link the stuff of course in the video description so i would suggest that if you highly if you're very technically minded please peruse this stuff yourself so you can have a better understanding how it all works and maybe if you want to lay out some more technical details in the comments below or something you feel i've missed please do so with that said let's talk about dgf shall we i'm going to put my glasses on so i can actually do that and read stuff so with the dense geometry format amd introduced a cash friendly representation of compressed triangles since future gpu architectures will support dgf GF is an opportunity to revisit different parts of the graphic programming stack that may utilize and benefit from DGF. Now note the date that this was posted. It is of course the 23rd of September. So future GPU architectures in this case would almost certainly be RDNA 5 or UDNA or whatever they want to call it. Before we go further into that blog post, I actually want to get into the DeLorean with you guys and uh, travel back to February. So this is several months ago at this point. And they actually detail more what this is. So um, historically in graphics, we've stored data in memory as vertex and index buffers, sent it to the hardware, rasterized it, and then produced pixels. But then we started to add ray tracing into the pipeline. But things have become a lot more complicated because of stuff like Nanite, which of course is for Unreal Engine 5. And basically speaking, it's a geometry system and therefore, geometry now is so convoluted, so complicated in scenes, because not only is there a lot of it, some of the geometry can be really, really small. So when ray tracing is doing its thing in a scene, the amount of geometry is very impactful to the performance, because obviously, if you've got tons of leaves and, you know, trees and other details that are kind of, you know, in the scene, they will, well, interfere with what's going on with the, the, the you know, the ray tracing. That's why, of course, Ray tracing in certain games is a lot more intensive, but obviously that does depend on a lot of other factors, not least of which programming skill and the type of ray tracing they're implementing, for example, path tracing is a little bit different than let's just say ray trace shadows. With that said, this is a new compression format. And they even say, AMB themselves, that if the API restrictions were lifted, the existing ray uh, hardware acceleration and structures are just too large for future content. So basically what they're saying is that the way they're doing things right now, it's just not up to snuff because the size of the models, you know, the geometry, it's just getting so large that throwing that around the GPU, it's very difficult because it's not just like, oh, well, it's a size in VRAM, <laughs> but then you've got to actually put that around the GPU, so that's taking up memory bandwidth. So let's just say you've got like 320 gigabytes a second of bandwidth or 600 or whatever, and you're throwing around hundreds of these models, you know, it's a lot of data, but also this needs to go into the various caches of the GPUs. And yeah, it's, it's just a lot is what I'm trying to tell you guys. So we can actually get a better understanding of what they're doing here by looking at this. Um, these are a couple of models that AMD are working on as examples back in, as I said, February. So this is 1.6, this is 2.1, this is 12.7 million triangles. And we can see also an input size, so 29. I'm going to round the figures just for our sanity, actually. 30 megabytes to around 6, 37 to 6, and 271 all the way up to 41 megabytes. So... Obviously, that is a tremendous saving in the amount of time. And there's also some other details here, like uh, frame times, bytes per triangle, and compression time as well. So if we get into the more modern, they do give you a recap. DGF introduced High Performance Graphics 2024 by AMD is a hardware-friendly format for storing compressed triangles. As part of the pre-process, the AMD DGF Baker decomposes a triangle mesh into smaller meshes, 
or short meshlets, and the DGF Baker then compresses those meshlets individually. The DGF meshlet consists of 64 positions and 64 triangles, and then is stored in a 128-byte DGF block along with meta information. And then obviously those blocks then come together to form a mesh. So you can almost think of this, and this is not technically accurate, but you can kind of think of this as a lot of the other formats that we've seen on the web, or it's not like this exactly but you can almost think of it as like a zip file where it's containing multiple different files so it's just basically a way for them or like a, a winrar is even better so they can basically uh, split the split the data up and much more easily be able to compress the information and there are actually some additional performance uh, there is actually some additional performance data that you guys can look at under the results um, I won't read out all of these verbally because it's going to take a while. This is going to be a really big deal with complex animations, honestly. Um, I can see this being really impactful. Now, NVIDIA are also doing a lot of stuff with uh, opacity micro uh, meshes, um, with RTX series of graphics cards, and obviously all of this is going to be a really big deal for the next generation of consoles as well we know the playstation 6 is using some variant of rdna for its future uh, for its uh, sorry a future version of rdna the next generation xbox is also going to be doing the same thing and it's not just like how many compute units of course the you know the rdna5 based gpus have or whatever it's also the efficiency of them so ultimately speaking if they're a lot more efficient they can get a lot more work done and oh, obviously that's a really good thing now talking of amd i want to talk to you guys about this patent here the co-compute unit and i want to give credit to joining unrelated dots who actually found this on twitter now he basically says another patent is AMD rebranding RT cores as co-compute cores and also linking them to L3 cache of computing cores. Oh, sorry, of compute cores. Now this patent is pretty lengthy. And I'll be honest, I haven't read all of it here. The thing is, this patent is one. Well, actually, I guess the first point of call is, is it even going to become a product? Patents can sometimes just be a patent and it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a product which ships could be for another GPU architecture, it could be a feature that doesn't make it for RDNA 5, it could be a specific branch or brand of something. It's, it's hard to know is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Also, patents are notoriously ambiguous, and they don't say something along the lines of, this is designed to help with this particular graphics card to improve ray tracing performance with this particular scene, this particular amount, and this particular expectation you can somewhat understand what the general gist of a patent is but you can't necessarily equate it one to one with that said if we read the abstract here a processor includes a compute units each including a first level cache and each uh to a compute unit with lower level cache in response a compute unit receiving instructions to perform operations for an application the compute unit determines one or more parameters based on the received instructions the compute unit then sends the parameters and instructions to perform one or more operations on behalf of the compute unit to a respective CCU, and then that performs the operation based on the parameters. Now, if we look through the patents, sorry, the, the figures here, you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. If I turn my head like this, it really helps. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, Google Patents. And you can kind of get an idea uh, where what what's going on with the flow. For example, here we see the central scheduler. There's one of the CCUs, the data fabric, and then there's more data fabric, blah, 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 some parameters. Uh, this one, actually, I don't need to twist my neck 90 degrees, so that's helpful. Launch primary wave of compute units, send the parameters to a co-compute unit at a lower level. Send a secondary wave for the co-compute unit. Perform instructions based on the parameters and then return data to the compute unit. So it's, it seems like, and I wonder if that gives you further data. Store data in, okay, so it's pretty much the same. So what I'm basically telling you guys is this basically is the compute unit sending, obviously, those instructions over to a co-compute unit, and then it handles those instructions on behalf of it. Now, could this be a ray tracing core? Very possibly, I mean... It doesn't specifically state a lot of this information in here, but it's hard to deny that the future of graphics is changing pretty fast. And um, this is a really good example of this. 
and I don't know how much of this is perhaps setting up the groundwork for, for example, cooperative vectors. I've mentioned about this before, I think, in a previous video. Um, I'm pretty sure I did. Anyway, so the way to, for example, think of cooperative vectors, let's use NVIDIA as a, a, perhaps an easy to understand example. So with NVIDIA, you obviously have the CUDA cores, and then you have the tensor cores. Tensor cores can be used for like machine learning operations, matrix operations, that type of stuff. So with this, you could actually have the CUDA cores performing an operation, and then the matrix cores, the, the uh, sorry, the um, the tensor cores can jump in to perform an operation if it feels like it's more performance. So I wonder just what AMD are going to be doing here. Again, this is very ambiguous stuff. I will be super curious though because it really does seem like the next generation of graphics from AMD is very performant. Um, and obviously the thing is with Shader Model 6 and I think Serena Tang, she's actually talked a lot about this stuff before, like neural rendering. So it's obvious that AMD are really jumping in for the whole neural rendering pipeline. And I, I, I want to stress something guys, when it comes to AMD, Remember that they are powering the next generation of Xbox, so the standard that is being implemented with DirectX is almost certainly what AMD are going to be supporting with its next generation of GPUs. A good example of this is if we go back to the Xbox Series X. Do you remember before the Series X launched, we started to hear all of these things that were going to be introduced to DirectX, like mesh shaders, like ray tracing and variable rate shading. It was like, oh, well, that's what the next generation Xbox supports and RDNA 2. Are you surprised? You get the idea. So it's going to be very interesting. Again, with these patents, I will further, I will go over these more in depth. But um, so far, it's very possible that joining is correct. But um, I will be super interested to see what goes on with AMD. Uh, at this point, I I think that RDNA 5 is going to be very, very impressive. Is it going to be NVIDIA? Who knows? At the end of the day, we don't know what NVIDIA are cooking for our RTX 60. There have been very few rumors at this point. All I've heard is that Rubin is going to be really good, but nothing specific with Rubin. So I guess we're going to have to just wait and see. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.